And Says, uh, is just right here on this tab here. Oh, perfect. Okay. Sounds great. I'm looking forward to both of them. No, no, no. I just fixed it. <laughs> it's not all about you. It's about that they can see more of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, there, look, see little things, but they'll like see the front floor of the crowd. Miss Eileen. Yes. 
Do you have a Friday inspiration? I do. Do I still need to stand? Yes. Okay. <laughs> We're going to do some calisthenics in a minute, maybe some bike awesome. stuff. So here, here you go. This is food for thought today. I gave you $10. He gave you $20. You felt that he was better because he gave you more. But he had 200 and I only had 10 Zoomers, can you guys hear that? Oh, good, great. Oh, good. Wow, that was a good one. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Sorry. Does that mean dollars and cents? Yeah. <laughs> that is, he's a dad. As Jim said, that was deep. Okay, deep. thank you. Awesome. That was super deep. Okay, do we have any guests today? No. Um, okay, birthdays, anniversaries. Does anyone have, you know, I don't have a current list. So from two Fridays ago till next Thursday, is there, are there any birthday, anniversary, wedding anniversaries, wedding or rotary anniversaries? Which sign right? Don and I celebrate next Monday our 46th wedding anniversary. Wow. Oh. Oh. He proclaimed it. Wow, I know Jim Hayden and his wife have one a full year. Coming up? Same day as ours. Oh, that's not that's long. Tomorrow, I have a wedding anniversary. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. 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 Y
really quick. Uh, Kim LaFortune uh, sent an email out that the Beyond High School event has been postponed. It's an opportunity for us to come and share the Rotary scholarships. Um, and she's offering virtual visits for students when they're in the Career Center, if we wanted to schedule one of those. So if anybody wants to join me and talk about Rotary scholarships next year, I'd be open to that. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Kristen, do you have anything for Interact? So our first meeting is next Wednesday, um, uh, September 8th, in my classroom at uh, 2.45. And then on Thursday, Interact is going to Ashley Point, where we're going to play Pictionary with the rest <coughs> there. So really excited to do that. Lovely to see faces again. So, hooray. Thank you. Uh, Valo, do you have anything else, Scotty? Kevin, um, they're still looking for a couple of uh, packages here. We're both looking for a meeting place, and they did call the school district, and there's no inside stuff um, until later, maybe. So there's that. <coughs> and then um, the parks department has some space for, like, outside, I guess. You can register for a shelter for five bucks or whatever. So I'll just pass that on to them. But if anybody knows of a place, I did go to the one place over there, the one the Darn's place, and um, they do that, but they don't do that because of the COVID thing right now. So it's kind of a tough thing to explain inside. So we're just hoping that everything else is good. Awesome. Thank you. Jim, do you have anything quickly on foundation? Nope. Nope. Uh, what's your, you're supposed to say doing awesome. What's that? You're supposed to say doing awesome. Yeah, we're doing awesome. Okay. We're really awesome. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. So Angie Public Relations, she's not here. Um, as you know, we, she has that recurring Friday morning work meeting. But again, if you see our post, anything on the auction, raffle tickets, our Tuesday night um, charity actions, please like it, comment, and pick it up in your feed and share it on your own. Um, that would be amazing. And now, our guest, Garvin. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. That's pretty darn good. That's pretty darn good. Are we doing good today? Good, good, good. <laughs> right, so I'm doing pretty good today and uh, kind of beat you up last week. It's beautiful out. Uh, the Huskies are going to beat Montana. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. 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 Happy luck. I had Alex and his mom yesterday, and Alex helped me uh, wash his mom's car. Ooh. He also sprayed me a little bit. Uh, don't give him the hose. And tomorrow night, I'm celebrating my daughter's 57th birthday, which is scary as hell, isn't it, Lauren, when they start getting that age? <laughs> yeah, that's when we start getting older than you are. Yeah. All right. I'll Venmo in forty-six dollars for uh, our wedding anniversary. I'm never going to catch up with Abraham. Uh, those two years ahead of me. Anyway, happy birthday! Congrats. Uh, happiest birthday, and yes, I'm sure that I'll be on a mock lake tomorrow to watch the dogs in the grizzlies. Dogs. <laughs> Can you say that? Um, <laughs> can you say that? Yeah. Happy five for uh, just for the start of the week. Just so many people pulling together. I mean, it's uh, it's always a miracle when everything kind of happens, but um, and there's always glitches too, which we could expect. But um, for the for most part, school is going great. Kids are happy to be back in school. We uh, were able to offer our families not only an in-person school option, but our elementary families a distance learning option, and our secondary students a distance learning option too. So uh, we're serving our students in, in multiple ways, uh, depending on what their situation is. So I feel good about that, um, and I feel good about the start of school, and um, it's going. So um, I didn't <clears throat> say it's going perfectly, but it's going. <laughs> Everybody knock, knock. This knock is wood. No, 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 if they do it next year, I highly recommend it. I know they're doing it. Every year. They are doing it next year. I already have an email from it. And she was on the list of recipients for getting the uh, Forbes Case uh, announcement. And they want to do something. They're not going to be here that day. But she said, I'll, I told them we're going to do a live auction. So they'll put it. She was really nice. Yeah, she said that Don and Larry were there. Yeah. And I told her I was sorry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we probably ruined the party. <laughs> she uh, sent me a thank you email for showing up. Well, how was the martini? <laughs> I think it was on me. The, the martinis were on me. If they're automated, you want to all show up. Maybe <laughs> you heard you go. I be. <laughs> Maybe years ago, I decided to give a thousand dollars to Rotary on my birthday, and I've done that ever since. Well, the market has been very favorable to me <laughs> this year, and so this year I'm giving Rotary two thousand dollars. Oh, wow. <laughs> Very happy Lauren showed up this morning and has checked the market the prices already. I got a happy 10. I'm going to start with Snomish Fire and Rescue brought a nice shiny fire truck to our abilities day last week. Um, so thank you very much, Kevin and the crew. Uh, and I'm going to go see my dad in Pendleton, Oregon this weekend. Right on. Cool. Fine. 
Uh, I have a happy uh, 10. I'm going to do $5 because we got back to school this week. Um, it's nice to kind of get back to normal and have a normal schedule again. Um, and then another uh, five for uh, doing our evening Rotary Club starting Tuesday. So I'm excited to see how that goes and hopefully we'll have some good days going forward. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a happy 10. Rochelle, I finally got the keys. Yeah. <laughs> did they actually move out though? And he cleaned the carpets. They did? And he took all the lawnmowers. It was awesome. Yeah. They cleaned the carpets that you're having ripped out today? Yeah. Uh, yes. Next Perfect. week, but yes. God bless the soul. He cleaned the carpets. So yes, he, he took all the stuff out. So thank you for all your help. That was the weirdest transaction, but happy $10. Thank you, Rochelle. But you powered through. You did awesome. Thank you. Sam's got one too. She's in the chat. Sam? Sam, Sam. Sam, Sam. Uh, Call him little Sam, Sam. Happy just because. She must be on the call. Angie, Angie, are you happy today or you want to call? Just because. I'm here now. <laughs> we don't see you. I haven't even had my breakfast yet. Oh, All right. Oh, you're going to make her sing. There she is. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Gina, looks happy. Gina, you look so happy. I'm happy because we brought kids back this week. Um, like Ken had said earlier, we were able to serve students in a variety of ways. Um, it hasn't been perfect. There's been bumps, but we've got kids and you can feel their smiles through their masks because they're so excited to be back at school. That's so awesome. Jack, Jack, Jack you look very happy. <laughs> Jack Brown is happy. I guess I'm happy because my mom got her pacemaker and it seems to be doing pretty good, so. Awesome. Okay, everyone's happy. Are you happy? I was gonna say you look happy. No, you look happy. Yeah. <laughs> I am so happy. You are. Yeah. Let me let me see here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Open up the wallet. So I'm gonna open it up to just have some fun. So I'm happy about school. Uh, Mrs. O'Brien is loving her class. She's been doing great. I want to fire class too. She's getting after it. You, know? you are ma ma magicians. All of you. Educators can't believe it. Anyway, that uh, let's see, uh, Seahawks, Jake Lutton. It's awesome to have him. He's a Marysville guy. He's a he's cousin of one of our firefighters. And then Rochelle to the street. Oh, thank you. Yep, yeah, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> What's Rochelle's name? Rochelle. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> Hannah. I'm Hannah. I like Hello, it. I'm Hannah today. Uh, my rotary tag is at home, so I just did. Just grab one. I am Hannah. It is a fan, fine. So I'll pay for this. And then I'll put a happy 10 in. I just spent the week in Philadelphia getting my daughter situated in her new apartment. So that was super fun. And we took Peyton and Ken and her boyfriend, and we were all there. We had to take a U Haul to Ikea. Um, and we just filled it up. And then of all the guys, hauled it three floors up to the top and put it all together and into an apartment. So it was awesome. So that was fun. So that's fine. Yeah. Awesome. Can I wrap All right, let's do this. Eileen, will you help me? Oh, I have a ticket. Okay. Grab something. The last three are 485. Oh, barely missed it. Uh oh. I heard you. All right, you're on. Maybe I should have come in the door before you left. <laughs> <laughs> You guys later. How much is it up to? Uh, okay. 96. Okay. 96. Wow. Okay, so now uh, <laughs> we have a few minutes. What time is it really? It's 7.51. Um, if you want to do a few minutes on course and cake. I do. So we have Tracy brought in a few baskets this morning. These are great samples. She did a gardening basket, and this is a car care basket. When you bring yours in, you don't need to wrap it or heat shrink it or any of this. She did awesome, but you don't need to do that because I'm just going to open this off up and take it apart in order to photograph it for our website. So you don't need to go to that work. Um, here are a bunch of baskets that you can take. 
to use as your base. I do ask that it's in something. You don't need to make it look amazing. Just put your stuff in a container and then I'll make it look amazing when I put it back together for delivery. Um, so I do make a little display so people that are looking at your item online can zoom in and see what's all in their basket. So these are free for you guys to take. And then our, look at our garden is growing. Sprouting. So we yeah. sprouted like $50 to the RAM. Congratulations on your anniversary. And Eileen brought in to Michael's, thank you. And then Lori's starter seed. I've got a question for you. We've got some Starbucks cards that uh, still have stuff on them. Do we have to really have to go find out how much is really yeah. on it? Or mm -hmm. can you have just like random amounts? <laughs> well, there's a dollar on one of them. So I, don't know. Mean, I have to go to Starbucks. I would bring them because um, when you use a Starbucks card, it just takes whatever's yeah. left on your card, right? Yeah, you can take a different card, you whip out another one. Like I have always have a stack of my cards because mm -hmm. the reason I closed the deal, the mortgage person sent me a card. Yeah, they mail me a card and thank you. So I have a bazillion of them. And um, they just keep them around, or people upload them to their apps. Yeah. So when they take a picture, whatever, but if it's 732 that's left on the car, it's just going to go right up into their, into their app. Can that see how old I am? I'll give you a <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. Hey, yeah, so what, um, you know, we are having an auction, and it's like not, it's like 17 days away. Yeah. 17 from the start on Monday, the 24th, it's a, it's a Friday for the live virtual auction, which is like, Three weeks away, and we've got to start getting more Can you guys hear? up on the table up there, and gift cards and things like that, as well as raffle tickets. It seems that that's hard. If anybody has any more sponsors, it's never too late for that. So we want to keep that momentum going. And Brian, across the street, um, you can take your uh, beer and wine over there. Two beers, two wines, and your basket, like Rochelle said. Um, it doesn't have to be wrapped up in that nice looking. Sulfane, I guess you call it, because she needs to take photographs of it and then send it over to either Eileen or Angie to get that uploaded on the website. We want to have a good present starting Monday the 20th. Don't so, send it to me. Send it to Eileen. Okay, send it to Eileen. So we'll get that figured out. <clears throat> and a couple things we want to think about right now is if there's any problem with that, you know, some ideas for baskets. One could be a wheelbarrow with you know some tools in there and a case of beer you know and then <laughs> yeah. that'll get a lot done. <laughs> <laughs> Ibuprofen. Those are essential tools. Yes, exactly. And, and the thing is too is you don't need to have a complete item. If you have some items you don't know what to do with, bring them in because then we combine them because somebody else brought something in oh, that may go idea. together, right? Yeah. That we may need just something to supplement to make it into a more simple item. So yeah. please bring in whatever you want to donate. And Brian's got available. next door. You just either call him or stop by. He's not there. He'll be there the next day or whatever. He's been really great about collecting all that stuff. And so we want to keep that momentum going. <clears throat> and I have reached out uh, as far as, well, let's back up a minute. Let's think about some things here for the uh, fund cause. We have the CPA from Hillstruck coming in here to talk about some access issues that they have that could use some money. Um, and we talked about bridge receiving, about that whole thing. Gary's kind of, uh, Gary and I might go visit that or whatever. Do you have something you want to? Well, I talked to Tracy Rubicino, Rubicello, whatever her last name is, uh, the other day and uh, asked her what their needs were. Uh, funding is the biggest thing. She said the uh, annual cost of food is about $12,000. But she was going to send me some other ideas uh, of things that they need. Somebody has donated a half court, a basketball court that they're going to put in the, the cement and the, the, ba uh, the basket and everything like that. Uh, so they don't need that. But she, she was going to talk to the rest of the crew there and see if there's something specific that they could identify that would get it up and exciting. Also, and, any, and if I set it up, if somebody else wants to go, uh, now it schools in, they have a little more opportunity because they cannot have the students there or the people, the young kids living there uh, when we come to tour. So he said it's a little more open now at school for, to be able to come there. So I can set that up anytime in the next few days to two weeks. Okay. 
we, we are, I think you should know, we are looking for a project to do for our community rather than just writing a check, asking for money, and writing a check over to the pod. We're looking for an actual project, and that's one of the reasons we've asked Melissa from Hill Technical because they have a project that is, I mean, benefits our community, but it's also saleable for us. We could package that up for our event and um, pull on some heart strings and open some wallets under the, their project. I've got a, one idea that I brought up a, a year ago, actually, when I went and did that video of the skate park. Uh, I talked to a few people there, and, and one of the ladies, uh, actually the one that was in the video, said, you know what would really be cool here is some kind of like bleachers, not much, but she said that, um, you know, it's, it's great to have this, and the kids love it, but there's no place for the parents to sit <coughs> where they can kind of look over the terrain and keep an eye on their kids. You got to sit at ground level off to the side somewhere. And so I, I can understand that, you know, it, it would be, it would really make sense to have, you know, just a small thing, three levels or four levels that uh, wouldn't be dangerous maybe and wouldn't become a skater's uh, apparatus. <laughs> you know, I have those little nerves and right. you can't use it for whatever. And, you know, <laughs>
<laughs> you know, they like to plan ahead and we're kind of like the last minute, so it's tough. And who picked you up at the end of the day? <laughs> John Dyer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, I think, uh, Eileen, do you have anything you want to say about greater giving or how that uh, No, website? just please send me, um, when you fill out the sheets for your items, just attach one of the sheets to the item and email me or hand me the, the form filled out. Thanks to Lance. He was super proactive and um, my boss donated some things and it just makes it easier for me to put the information. Yeah. Okay, so another thing we're kind of working on programming, but that kind of goes on the fly, I think, with, with the chief over here and Gary going to be the MC, so that would be kind of cool. That would be exciting. So, and I think we need a backdrop. You might be looking into a Viking backdrop. Okay, good. Excellent. <clears throat> and then, um, so that would be kind of fun. Uh, so another thing to be kind of brainstorming a little bit here is um, either a silent auction or live auction. So let's talk about live auction stuff I have. I think the Hawaiian condo that Jim has has been confirmed and, and, and the other gym, the Hood Canal things is confirmed. Um, the, I don't know if we've done it or not, I'll get the wine tasting from across the room. Okay. Just for the winery. All right. Okay, good. And then we got to get all the procurement stuff into Eileen over there, so that's, that's a good. <clears throat> and then I did um, the dinner cruise, I think, was confirmed, so we're doing that. Then I had a couple other things over pause. I did send something to Kristen. I think she was on a minute ago. She was. She had a student. Photograph. Okay. <laughs> so I, I sent her a little bit. I know there's talk about that. I haven't heard back yet about the La Paz thing. I think the sheep went for that, didn't you? You guys, you love you guys, Laredo. Oh, yeah, Laredo. Laredo. Hey, it was Laredo. 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 It was Laredo. Oh, that's, <laughs> no, that's <laughs> yours. That's both of theirs. They're the same place. Laredo. Oh, okay. Laredo is Loreto? Yeah, there's no A and there's no D. It's Loreto. 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 It's terrible. It's a horrible place. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hot. Yeah, it's it's like, you can't drink the water. It's kind of like the dinner crew. It's horrible. It's a water. Don't, don't bet on it. Who owns that? Kristen. Kristen. Yeah, okay. Okay. So I, I put after I put her back. And then Mama Mama's yeah. Mountains. John Spencer, I don't know if we have any input on that yet, but that was the real last one. Yeah, I think it was. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So there's a couple things plus uh, some other ideas we were thinking about. <clears throat> and this could be a live thing is the, the fire boat ride, you know. I don't know if that's as possible. Okay. Yeah. Maybe someone that can go either. faster than one mile an hour. <laughs> yeah. And then I think one time there was a fire truck ride as well. So yeah, I got yeah, the birthday okay. fire truck okay. school. So fire that's good. School. Those are, yeah. uh, I'll just put confirmed. Awesome. And then okay. I think we could we had at one time the the, the Layla Resort with the night stay or whatever. I don't know if Jim I, I didn't do anything on it yet. Go ahead with your contact. Okay. So it's it Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> so we're giving you the hook. I know. <laughs> and then, uh, so one more thing. Okay, one <laughs> short little thing. One more so I can stay the block. So uh, we're we thinking like Garden workers like three men and a truck and a bark thing, so that could be a live auction. We did that one other time, and that's pretty fun for me to do that. Again. The most fun is that somebody bought it and they never acted. That's what I like the best. <laughs> so we didn't have to do the work. That was the most fun. Okay, I think I got it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. Okay, so now we have a special presentation by a couple of special order members. Oh, me? Okay, yeah. thanks. And he's going to get my. Um, a little slideshow going. So, um, is anybody surprised to know? Well, actually, I'm the back of the kind of thing. Are anybody surprised to know that this is my father? Florida. Yeah, I know. Really? Yeah. So, a lot of you know him as being this very successful man who's 96. He was born in 1925. Do you know I got a little hungry here? 
So, but yeah, he's done some amazing things with his life. Well, yeah. we may have lost. He was a district manager for more business forms. When he retired from there, he was uh, a little bit like Jim. He failed at retirement, and so he started his own business and was um, had his own company. He was very successful with that. Uh, he's been married 72 years. That's very impressive. But one of his best accomplishments were his wonderful daughters that he was. Good. <laughs> Congratulations. Great job. Great job. So you know a lot about, you know, all his new successes. He sailed uh, across the Pacific. He's done Route 66, um, traveled many places. But what I want to share with you today is a little bit about where some of that started when he was very young. So um, he was born in San Francisco. He had two siblings, um, his brother Rich, who's a, little, what, a year and a half younger than you, and uh, they still talk almost every day. So those whole genes are, are pretty longevity. Um, his dad owned um, oil refineries, if I've got that right. Hopefully I've got my, my facts right. And so, but this, his dad is a whole nother story, so we won't go there, but um, they moved around a little bit, and when he's very young, I know they were living in Wyoming, and while they were living there, his parents decided to divorce. So dad, his younger brother Rich, and his baby sister Letitia moved to South Carolina with his mom. So um, life in South Carolina was kind of tough. And dirt poor is a very accurate statement. So some of the stories I heard were that um, he and Rich would go hunting for squirrels to eat. That they didn't always get to school. They didn't have shoes. They had to walk, I don't know, how, much, how many miles they had to get to the bus stop. Yeah. yeah, they had to walk quite a distance to get to the bus stop. They didn't have money for books. So, um, so school was sporadic at best. And finally, um, his mother discovered that she really could not care for these children. So she made a huge sacrifice and agreed to send them to their father, um, who lived in Canada at the time. And uh, so, Unfortunately, one of the stipulations of her giving up custody of her three beloved children was that she would not ever have contact with them again. And she didn't. So that was a huge sacrifice on her part, but for the benefit of her children. And there is more story to that, but you know, it's a long story. So we learned more just a few years ago about her. Um, so Sending the kids off to Canada. She puts these three kids on the train. There is no adult uh, supervision. Dad is 12 years older, 12 years old, and he's the eldest, and he's in charge at 12. So they get on the train in South Carolina to head to Canada. It's a beautiful day in February in South Carolina. Not so much in Canada. So they are on the train and they are doing cross country to Canada. They have to change trains, I know, in Chicago, I believe it was. Oh, good, I got a nod, I got my facts right. Um, and uh, so, yes, you know, here's dad with his young sibling. How old was, I know um, Rich was probably 10 or 11. How old was Letitia? She was quite a bit younger, wasn't she? She was seven. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I just, I can't believe this 12 year old's in charge of his two younger siblings is doing this. Um, they change trains, they get to the Canadian border uh, in their nice little knickers or whatever from South Carolina. And they're not allowed to cross the border because they're unaccompanied minors. So my grandpa had, gets called and he has to come down and get them and to bring them across the border. And I can't remember, was it that day or the next day that he went and got you guys appropriate clothing? But the story goes that he was banging on the door of the shopkeeper until the shopkeeper opened up the shop 
so that they could get coats. And uh, dad was, you know, the eldest. And so he got the very best coat, which was a fake fur coat. And it was very, very special. Oh, we don't have our slideshow going. What do I need to do to get that slideshow going? I'm sorry. I didn't ask you to do it, did I? No, I wasn't sure what the schedule was. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can get my, my um, PowerPoint going. Oh, I'll try. This is a okay. little different than um, okay. other versions of. A PowerPoint. Did you put your thumb drive on the podium board? Yeah, he has it plugged in, I think. Yeah. We got a choice between desktop and application, so. <laughs> Where's Angie when you need it? I know. <laughs> yep, there it is. I'm right here. Yeah, we're, we're yep. making. So, can you guys see the pictures or anything? Okay. Now, the big question is can the, the Zoom attendees see this? No. Yeah. So, yeah. But as you look at these pictures, hopefully you have to scroll through and you'll see the eldest. Uh, Wrong one. <laughs> you'll see the eldest child, which is Lauren. And he always looks pretty serious. And a lot of times he's got his tie on. So, even as a young child, to see him as being this responsible adult, very serious adult. Try that. So, hopefully, we'll get those going. So anyway, they get to Canada, they've got their dad, grandpa's taking care of them, make sure they've got some warm clothing now. Um, there when go. they get there, his mom, I mean, his dad has remarried oh, and has input yep. now. And so there's a new family that these kids are now being integrated into. And they're behind in school because they haven't been going on a regular basis. Well, that sounds like a pretty much of a detriment. Except that by the time dad graduated high school, he graduated early. So he knows how to apply himself. And he did once given the good, the good opportunities. So I'll just advance whenever you want me to. Oh, it's, it's not doing the... Well, it could be. I'm not familiar okay, with okay, this let's particular... Let's go through because I'm almost done anyway. All righty. Actually, on time, I'll do it. And then I can kind of, what do I need to do to advance? You just... got me. This isn't my computer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, we'll do it like this. Okay. Just do touch the pictures, All right. I guess. Yeah, so there's our nice, serious Lauren and his younger siblings. Rich has always got a smile on his face. There we go. There, there Lauren has a smile. That was a good one. Here's when they're back into Canada with the new family. Yeah, very serious dad. And there's my uncle, my grandpa, um, Ben, and baby Ben. And um, this is when we're in Yakima. That adorable little girl. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> uh, this must have been during your career with more business forms as a district manager. Sailing has always been a very big part of his life. A lot of racing out here outside of Everett. And uh, like I said, they did, a, they did one across the Pacific to Hawaii, a race. And there they are with the grandbabies. That's um, my baby son and uh, Eric and Jason, the first two grandbabies. Let's see if I can get this to advance. Does this I don't know how to scroll down. Oh, here, hang on. I think I might be able to figure it out. There we go. Some of the more recent pictures, um, dad before the pandemic was very involved with the, at the senior center with the bingo. He liked to sell tickets and help with that. And of course you guys know that he's been a Rotarian for a year or two. Um, <laughs> Back in 19, I mean, excuse me, in 2017, he was celebrating 50 years, and we have a nice article about him on that. A perfect attendance. A perfect attendance. Yes, thank you. And so this is what he looks like most of the time now, is in his office, on his computer, playing with his investments and keeping track of those. Yeah, Dad, I snuck up behind you. The other day and did that. And he's had many honors and um, acknowledgments. And so this is one wall 
one wall of his office with all the plaques and considerations there. So I guess the point of, um, I'm gonna go back to that one. The point of what I wanted to say was, yeah, he's very successful, he's done a lot, but he came from some tough times and he overcame those tough times and made himself the man he is today. Man, I'm very proud of him. And um, there's one thing that dad frequently told my sister and myself, he would say, if you've been blessed with much, it is your responsibility to give back to your community. And dad, I want to thank you for not only saying it, but doing it. So thank you. I love you. probably wonder why we were doing this, but you know, when, when we decided that we were going to have this uh, meeting today because of Lauren's 96th birthday, uh, we decided that, you know, we need to have a little bit of time uh, spent talking about Lauren uh, and thanking him for all that he has done for Rotary. Uh, he wasn't the first person that I met when I came to Lake Stevens. Joyce Bell was the first one that I met when her and I were at a Marysville uh, noon Rotary Club meeting as I was checking out clubs. I've come to know Lauren very much, played golf in his golf group, his investment group. And, you know, why we're honoring him is he started the Lauren Hole Endowment that has substantially grown over time. And today, the $2,000 gift is amazing. He has 54 years of perfect attendance. And I was really excited that uh, when I went through the Russell Hampton uh, uh, book, there was a pen that you could put a number on for perfect attendance. Well, that was great. So I ordered the thing after I talked to Rochelle and everything. The only problem was is when I got it in, you need a magnifying glass to be able to read it. <laughs> but we have a pen, and I, I got the 55th one just in case he is able. So there is a pen with your rotary 54 years attendance, and then you can apply that next year. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And there's one other thing. I'll wear that with pride. Great. There's one other thing. I can't give it to you. We can't give it to you now. But when you leave, we'll give it to you as uh, a party <laughs> gift. It might be a little bit of a libation is why we can't give it to you right now. <laughs> it might be something that you drink every day about five o'clock. <laughs> Thank you, Lori, for that presentation. Congratulations, Lauren. Um, so I do want to introduce our speaker for today. And you do have uh, what time is it? Uh, 10 minutes. If you guys want to go at, yeah, at 830, if you want to go, go ahead. But we're probably going to run over so we can hear more about this project if you have any questions on it. And I'll tell them. Welcome. Perfect. I'll, I can pull this up here real quick. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let's, you know, we might have to just do it like this and that's okay. We'll just make it work. So I will share right. this. There you go. Okay. So, first of all, I just want to thank you guys for having me here. Um, Connor Davis asked if I was willing to come and talk about Mount Pilchuck and a little bit about some of our um, our special program, specialized program that we have. And I am just truly honored to be here. And uh, thank you guys for for supporting um, Mount Pilchuck and and some of the cool things that we're wanting to do there and for the community. So uh, I am Melissa Weatherby. I'm the new principal at Mount Pilchuck. Um, and I, 
um, have only actually in the last couple of years really become a part of the Lake Stevens community. I previously was the assistant principal at uh, Caballero. And it's really been really neat over the last few years to become a part of this community and learn more about what all the amazing things that are going on here. And particularly what some of the things are that the Rotary has been doing. Um, it is neat, I see some familiar faces, Dr. Ken Collins and Eileen, actually my husband uh, previously worked with Eileen at the American Cancer Society. So that's really fun to see, to see you here. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about um, special education in the Lake Stevens School District and then specifically at Mount Tilcha. So if you're not familiar with um, special education services in uh, Lake Stevens School District, there's a couple of different types of special services. So at every elementary school in Lake Stevens, we have um, the general education classes, um, but then there's also um, what we call a resource room uh, services. And so those are at every single elementary school. And it's for students who have maybe a specific learning disability. They have um, some difficulties with reading or writing or math, and they receive services in either a push-in or pull-out model. So we have um, support staff or certificated staff that go into their classroom and help support them in those areas um, of need, um, or they'll pull them out maybe for brief periods of time to help them meet their goals in those areas. Um, in addition to that, within the district, we have what are called specialized programs. And those are housed at various different schools. So for example, Glenwood has um, our uh, REACH program, which is students who have maybe some uh, social, emotional, or behavioral um, goals and needs. Um, at both Skyline and Highlands, they have what are called the Structured Learning Center. So those are students who typically are on the autism spectrum and they need really structured routines within their day. Um, so maybe they will just have some brief whole class instruction but a lot of the times they might have this very individualized um, day. And then at Mount Pilchuck, we have the life skills program. And I'm going to um, turn it over to Dr. Uh, Valenzuela, Jamie Valenzuela. She's our occupational therapist um, here in just a minute to kind of talk specifically about the life skills program. Um, students in our life skills program come from all different areas of the district. So maybe their home school would be Hillcrest but because of the, their needs and their, um, uh, their individualized educational plan, they come to Mount Pilchuck. We have 24 students currently in the program, three certificated staff, and I believe it's 16 um, paraeducators because the students have some really significant needs. Um, a lot of them actually have a, an individual adult that works with them. So I'll have um, Dr. Valenzuela tell us a little bit about kind of what is um, the, the typical life skill student like? All right. So I'm Jamie um, Valenzuela, and I've been in the district for over 20 years. Um, I'm an occupational therapist. I've worked at almost every school, um, but I've been at Mount Pilcha for all 20 of those years with our life skills program. And so our life skills program is uh, designed for kids with cognitive or intellectual disabilities, but we also have many students with very significant and complicated medical and physical disabilities as well. Um, you know, we have students in wheelchairs, we have lots of specialized equipment for students who are unable to ambulate or who need assistance with walkers, um, and gait trainers, and those kinds of things. We have, we do also have students with sensory needs so that um, they may have autism or other sensory needs where, where maybe sensory input is overwhelming to them because in a lower stimulated environment. So we really serve a wide variety of kids with a wide variety of needs. And um, it varies a lot from year to year uh, who, who we're serving. And then when um, the students in the life skills program at Mount Pilchuck, or how that's housed at Mount Pilchuck, um, when they get to middle school, that program is at Lake Stevens Middle School. So the students, whether they're from this, um, you know, North Lake area or from more down in the South, they all go to Lake Stevens Middle School, then CAB and then the high school. Um, and so if you actually look at the 
number of students that we have in the life skills program throughout the entire district, K through or even um, uh, preschool through um, high school, it is a large um, population of our community. Um, and like I said, they're from all throughout the Lake Stevens um, area. And so um, I'm going to have uh, Dr. Venezuela tell us, talk a little bit about the current um, playground at Mount Pilchuck and maybe how it's not meeting the needs of all students. Um, and then also just a little bit about kind of the, um, the playgrounds and the accessible equipment that we do and don't have in the Lake Stevens community to meet the needs of the, the children in the community. So I'll have her go ahead and kind of talk here. Yeah, so this is a playground that we built maybe 12 years ago um, with some accessibility in mind. Um, we worked with the Mount Pilchuck PTA, with the school district for some funding and some additional fundraising. And it does have some great accessible components. We have a ramp for our wheelchair users. We have um, accessible panels that um, kids with sensory needs or all kids really can, can use, you know, kids that can crawl but not walk. We have some of that stuff. Um, but what we're really lacking is, one, an accessible surface. So this is bark. Kids in wheelchairs cannot independently access that that playground. Um, and some of the higher stuff, we want to have a wide variety of equipment. We want equipment that is accessible for our life skills kids. And I want equipment that is going to challenge the gross motor skills of our, you know, general education population as well. Um, but yeah, so in this one, you know, we have some components. We're lacking things like wheelchair swings. I want my kids who are in wheelchairs to be able to experience the same play opportunities that all my kids do. So swings and things like that. Um, in the Lake Stevens community, we're lucky because they just built that brand new playground down the street. There are some great components there. We have, you know, an accessible surface like this, which is a solid surface. It's not gonna move. Kids can independently wheel their wheelchairs or their standers, their walkers. Um, and it's safe because it's padded. They, this you is not the yeah. list. No, that's not the list. Uh, this is just an example of types of components um, that an inclusive playground might have. So an accessible surface that is cushioned for any student that might fall or whatnot, but students who have mobility issues are able to access it. You'll see a variety of ramps, um, some different things that are lower down for um, students to be able to access. Also some other neighborhood, not in our Lake Stevens community, but in other communities, they have things like accessible um, swings, which we don't have anywhere in the Lake Stevens community. Yeah. And so when we're looking at, you know, the loss of kids oasis, which is a loss for a lot of people in the community and for our school, I choose to look at it as this really exciting opportunity where we have the opportunity to build something really cool it's going to be really exciting for all the kids in the community and our school, but will be accessible for my life skills students. Um, and if you look at Puget Sound area, there's some really, really cool playgrounds that have been built in the last five years that are accessible but have challenging components for all the students. So, you know, Miner's Corner, there's um, a great forest park over in Everett. I went down to Coulon Park in, in Renton, which has this amazing. Um, circular ramp that all, went all the way up to the top of a slide so potentially a kid in a wheelchair could experience going on a slide. Um, and so I think just it's such an exciting opportunity. And so we're excited to be working with you and with the, the district on how we can best um, create something for all of the students in the district, including the kids with significant disabilities that we have with them. Do you guys have any questions about Mount Pilchuck or about life skills or accessibility, things like that? Well, I have more questions. Do you have more presentation or no? Nope. Okay. So for this new playground, how much does it cost? How much do you need? Can we do how much is a swing? Can we do components? Do we need a bike side seat? Um, if we're going to present this to have our topic cause, do we need um, a spot? We can't do a whole definitely. Playground. And we can definitely look into more of that. I'll be honest that I wasn't 100% sure exactly what all you guys were looking for in terms of, of uh, presentation. 
Um, and so we were just kind of, you know, trying to explain a little bit about the population and then um, maybe what some potential needs are. Um, I haven't done research specific about, you know, cost of different items and things like that. Uh, Dr. Valenzuela, I don't know if you have some of that information um, specific to it. Um, and I know some of it will be working with the district on, you know, are we allowed to have, for example, acceptable space, right? Because there are some liability things related to that. Or what are some of those options um, that we can maybe piece by piece start incorporating different components? Um, and so, uh, yeah, I'm definitely happy to, to work on more research related to specifics um, about that. Um, uh, Connor Davis has come to me and said, hey, we're thinking about doing stuff like this. And can you share with us a little bit about the population? And so I apologize that I don't have that information. You did a fabulous job. Thank you so much. This is all information that we need because, of course, we are looking for long term mm -hmm. commitments, right? Because we're very invested in our community. So um, this is exactly what we need here, but then to move forward with us and our needs by the, you know, our event this month. Um, yeah, and and I, I do think that you know in order to really fully meet the needs of, of the the students in our community, and like I said, not just the Mountain Hill Chuck thing, but it, it truly is full Lake Stevens community. Um, I think it might end up being kind of a step by step approach because it's not cheap, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, maybe we start with looking at the accessible surfaces first. Um, as kind of a first layer so that we can really have even students accessing what we currently already have. And then what are some individual components, some different, um, you know, whether it's a, a swing or an accessible, um, some more accessible sensory panels, right? And then figuring out, okay, how can we incrementally um, kind of improve what we have? Um, because it, it, it isn't necessarily just a, oh, hey, we could do it all at one time, but how can we incrementally and come up with a plan for, okay, first we're gonna do this, then we can do this, then we can do this. I know our PTA is also really invested in trying to help support this um, with some of our, um, our school fundraising um, efforts um, as well. And so I think, um, yeah, developing that plan and, and Dr. Valenzuela is really invested in, in this concept as well. Um, and so we can start working on that and um, provide you with more information as we kind of um, get that nailed down. Um, and like I said, it really will have to be a, a good partnership. I'll work with um, Teresa Main and, and Rob Stanton and things like that in terms of what that might look like from, from that standpoint. Does your PTA get a current rate going right now because of this? Is it referenced? So I've, I've talked to them um, a little bit. I met with them. So obviously I'm <laughs> new to not public, so coming into it. Um, but they have said um, before that that, or when I met with them, that that's something that they're interested in helping support as well. Um, and so, uh, because it is such a significant need um, for the, the school and the community. Um, so now what that looks like is an actual practice, I'm not sure yet, um, but it is something that they have expressed um, as a, a seen need, right? Something that they see and they recognize that that is a need and that they want to support, but what that will actually look like um, uh, in terms of what they are able to, to help and contribute to, I don't know. So it could look anywhere from adding on to the existing play structure at Mount Hillchuck mm -hmm. to uh, being part of anything that we might do to replace the Cruise Oasis to yeah. some place in town, maybe working with the city yeah. uh, as they start to, well, not start, but as they continue to build recreation areas yeah. throughout the, the city. Yeah. So you have a space to add uh, uh, the current sites. Uh, yeah, so um, it's, it's Mount Hillchuck is a very large um, outdoor area. So not only adjacent to the current playground where there might be room to expand the current playground, we also do have the area where Kids Oasis was um, that if we were to, to look at, you know, creating something there, there's that option. Um, so I think there's there's a wide variety of options and really we need to sit down kind of uh, the district and, and look at, hey, what does that actually look like and, and what would be those next steps um, in terms of either adding on or, or creating some opportunities within specifically at Mount Hillchuck, but then as Dr. Collins mentioned, you know, the greater community as well. Any questions? 
park over there by Highland Mill, that brown dirt feeling you talked about at one point. That's awesome. That's really nice. That's awesome. wonderful. Something like that. I know another thing I think there's got some grants. Sometimes we can double our money, but there's some strings on that, and we'd have to kind of do some hands on stuff. So keep that in your mind a little yeah. bit. Yeah, so I mean, I think it really comes down to, to what our, our finances have ended up being, what we can can do, and, and like I said, maybe it's that incremental, we do this thing this time, and then as we get more funds, we can, you know, so coming up with a, a clear plan, I think is going to be important, so. Yeah, that's right. We need to have visuals. Yes. <laughs> well, one thing that we're going to do is um, survey our public about give the ways to say what might would need be to go into that spot um, because I mean it was absolutely necessary that it let go that it be torn down. Um, but but beyond that, uh, working with uh, Mayor Daly and Gene Brazil from the city and uh, of course our district uh, to determine exactly what that's going to look like, but also what are the needs of our community um, as we kind of laid out and, and I know that. Brett was here not too long ago, and they're talking about a pump track, and they're talking about all these things that are creating recreational opportunities for the district or for the community. Um, it's got to include a component of um, meeting the needs of students with a special needs. Yeah. And I think that's kind of one of our goals is just to bring awareness to that concept that we really want to keep that in mind because we do have um, a significant population within the community of students with special needs and we want to keep them in mind as we're, you know, coming up with um, opportunities to create recreational opportunities for kids in general in the community. So, thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. <laughs>